Good evening. Um, can you all hear me? Yes. Good. Thank you. Um, COVID means that we're not allowed paper, which means that I can't print poems on paper, but we are allowed to project poems. And what I want to do this evening is to talk about four poems, two by uh, Goethe, one a folk poem from uh, the boy's magic horn, this club in Wunderhorn, and one that purports to be by Mary, Queen of Scots. And please don't be alarmed, the idea is that we're going to recite them uh, together, because they will be projected up here only in German. But German's very easy, it's, it's a bit like English, and I just think that if you relish text, you have a much greater chance of actually understanding the song. And these are very great poems. So we're going to start uh, with Hugo Vol. And by the way, this is a shameless plug. If anyone's interested in uh, my new book on Hugo Wolf, <laughs> it's a special Leeds, uh, it's a, the complete songs of Hugo Wolf. It's a Leeds special price, 25 pounds, but to students, it is 20 pounds instead of 30. So if you would like one, just come up and browse what you think you might be interested at the end. But we're going to start with these um, Mignon songs. Who is Mignon? Mignon is age 13, believe it or not. She's been abducted from Italy by a troupe of theatre people, and she's been brought to Germany where she longs for her homeland. She also longs for the man she's fallen in love with, who is much older. His name is Wilhelm Meister. And the first song that she sings is Heiß mich nicht reden, heiß mich schweigen. Bid me not speak, bid me be silent. Because one of the players has said, come on, tell us about yourself. You seem so mysterious. What is your background? You therefore have to know that when she was being abducted, she had a vision of the Virgin Mary. And the Virgin Mary promised to look after her. And uh, Mignon then swore, she made a vow that she would never ever mention the vision of the Virgin Mary or anything to do with her background. So this is a really contorted poem and song. Bid me not speak bid me be silent. We then have, her next song is So lasst mich scheinen bis ich werde. Let me seem an angel until I actually become one. She is at a party, she's been dressed up by the adults as an angel and she's going to give the little children presents. And the children are absolutely fascinated by her, this phenomenon in white with wings and they want to touch her and then they want to disrobe her. And she says, please don't. So lass mich scheinen, bis ich werde. Let me seem an angel until I actually become one in heaven. My time on earth for 13 years has been too painful, and I want to die. We then, Jonathan, the first poem which is going to be projected, we have the immortal Kennst du das Land. Wolf's setting is perhaps the greatest song in the entire leader repertoire. It's been set by Beethoven, by Schubert, by Schumann. To my mind and ears, the Wolf is in a different sort of league. Can we just look at it? She has a vision of her homeland, and she says, do we have it up there? German really is easy. Kennst du das Land? Do you know the land wo die Zitronen blühen, where the lemons blossom? Im dunklen Laub, in the dark foliage, die Goldorangen glühen, they glow. Ein sanfter Wind, a gentle wind, von blauem Himmel weht. Die Myrte, the myrtle, does it still stand silent and hoch and high, the laurel? And we go, kennst du es wohl? And the refrain comes in every verse. It's, it's, it's the same. Kennst du es wohl? Do you know it? And she says, dahin. Dahin möchte ich mit dir, o mein Geliebter, ziehen. That's where I want to go with you, my beloved. She's talking to this older man, Wilhelm Meister. So that's the generality, the country. 
You then go to the house where she used to spend some time. It's far more intimate, and you'll hear in the piano's left hand increased chromaticism. So Kenstruder's house, the house, Auf Säulen ruht sein Dach, it's a Palladian villa. On pillars rests its roof. Um, um, es glänzt der Saal, the, the room gleams, es schimmert das Gemach, and the apartment shimmers. Und Marmorbilder, Marble images, these are the Palladian statues on either side of the steps as you go up to a villa. Stehen und sehen dich an, they look and stare at you. And she asks, was hat man dir, du armes Kind, getan? What have they done to you? Dahin, with repetition, dahin möchte ich mit dir um mein Beschützer ziehen, my protector. Why protector? Because Wilhelm Meister bought her freedom by paying the showman 30 crowns. And this extraordinary last verse where she depicts the mountains, the Dolomites, the Alps that bar her way back to Italy. Kennst du den Berg? Bergs, Edinburgh, it's, it's an iceberg. It's, it's the same language. Kennst du den Berg? Da kennst du den Berg mit seinem Wolkensteg, with its cloud-girt path. Das Maultier, the mule, sucht im Nebel seinen Weg, seeks in the mist its way. Then it goes on. Um, in Höhlen wohnt der Drachen alter Brut. The dragons live in caves. Er stürzt der Fels. The cliff is sheer. Und über ihn die Flut. Do you know it? And then, not the subjunctive, not möchte ich mit dir, but dahin geht unser Weg. Present tense, indicative. She's on her way already. And the music is extraordinary. It's G flat shifts to F sharp minor. Tremolandi, thunder out in both hands. And the music, ineffably overwrought, mirrors her ecstatic vision of her homeland beyond the Alps. It's extraordinary. So, be brave. Here we go. Don't be shy. Can we go, go, go from the beginning? And I'll try and keep in sync with uh, Jonathan's uh, projection of it. If we don't finish this lecture, I might not get all the songs. It doesn't matter. Just insights in one or two. So here we go. Eins, zwei, drei. Kennst du das Land, wo die Zitronen blühen, im dunklen Laub die Goldorangen glühen, ein sanfter Wind von blauem Himmel weht, die Myrte still und hoch der Lorbeer steht? Kennst du es wohl? Dahin, dahin möchte ich mit dir O mein geliebter ziehen. And then far more intimate now. Kennst du das Haus? Auf Säulen ruht sein Dach. Es glänzt der Saal, es schimmert das Gemach. Und Marmorbilder stehen und sehen dich an. Was hat man dir, du armes Kind, getan? Kennst du es wohl? Dahin. Dahin möchte ich mit dir um mein Beschützer ziehen. And then just picture the tremolandi in both hands, Judah the mountain. Kennst du den Berg und seinen Wolkensteg? Das Maultier sucht im Nebel seinen Weg. In Höhlen wohnt der Drachen alter Brut. Er stürzt der Fels. Und über ihn die Flut, kennst du ihn wohl? Dahin geht unser Weg, du Vater, lass uns ziehen. And Sopranos and Mezzos, Vater is such a gift. You've got the close vowels of Geliebter and Beschützer, Vater, lass uns ziehen. Her next song is also one of the most celebrated in the German language, and all the singers here and pianists will know it, Nur wer die Sehnsucht kennt. If we could have it, Jonathan. Just look at the poem first. Again, it's a poem of longing, 
Sehnsucht is this romantic German word for longing. So, can we have the first line? Thank you. So, just, I'll explain. Only he who longing knows, weiß, was ich leide, know what I suffer. When we go, allein und abgetrennt von aller Freude, al alone and cut off from all joy, sehe ich ans firmament, I look at the firmament nach jener Seite, in that direction, in other words, Italy. Es ach, der mich liebt und kennt, the man who loves me and knows me, ist in der Weite, is far away. Es schwindelt mir, my head reels, es brennt mein Eingeweide, my innards, often translate, is, uh, 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 burn. Nur wer die Sehnsucht kennt, weiß, was ich leide. It's misunderstood, this great poem and song. It's got nothing to do with the traditional romantic longing of German writers like Novalis. It's got to do with sexual desire. What you have to know is this, that in the first version of the novel, Mignon sees her would-be lover, uh, Wilhelm, flirting with this woman called Felina. And she simply can't cope with it. She runs off, and Goethe tells us that she spent the night in entsetzlichen Zuckungen, suffering terrible convulsions. The doctor then examines her and simply says that she is pathologically ill with desire for uh, Wilhelm. And I think the key word is Eingeweide. It's often translated as entrails. What I think it really means is her womb. Sopranos and pianists will remember Gretchen am Spinrade. Do you remember the kiss? And then, um, mein Busen drängt sich nach ihm hin. My bosom, my breasts yearn for him. But Goethe's original, which Schubert didn't know, was not that. It was mein Schoß, Gott, drängt sich. My womb yearns for him. I think that's what it means here. And these songs by Wolf are completely different to Schubert's. Schubert's Mignon songs and the Harper songs, all in E minor, by the way, the Harper, they are incredibly beautiful. You hear them and you can sing them. You can hum them. You can't do that with these Wolf songs. They're more pathological. And he gets there through dissonances and through a veiling of ton uh, tonality. They're really screwed up. And a great singer like Dorothea, I think we're going to hear that tonight in all of these. They're miracles, but they're completely different to Schubert. So that's the Wolf. We now turn to Mahler. Um, Mahler, by the way, um, knew Wolf. Um, as students, they shared rooms together. They did, then saw very little of each other for the rest of their lives until, in um, 1897, Wolf went up to Mahler, who was the intendant of the Vienna State Opera, and asked him if he could put on his opera de Corrigidor. When Mahler refused, Wolf said that he, Wolf, had been appointed intendant in Mahler's stead. It was an outbreak of insanity. A week later, he was carted off to the mental asylum, moved to another one to uh, about eight or nine months later, and spent the last five or six years in a mental asylum. And he died in 1903, horribly wasted and shrunken in the arms of his nurse, Johann Scheidner. And he's buried in the Central Friedhof in Vienna between Beethoven and Schubert. He, to my mind, he's one of the great, great leader composers. Mahler's things, songs are, are quite, quite different. Over half of them are from Des Knaben Wunderhorn, the boy's magic horn. I think you probably might be aware of what that is. These, this is folk poetry. It was gathered by Arnim and Brentano, two German poets who went round Germany asking perhaps the elderly 
to recite poems that they might know. It's an oral tradition. They then printed them, sometimes with embellishments of their own, and these are now known as Disknaben Wunderhorn. They were published in 1805 to 1808. We're going to hear six of them this evening. I just want to concentrate on the last one. Um, I'm not sure it's the last one they're going to perform, but Das Irdische Leben. Can we just look at it? Life on Earth. That wasn't its name, by the way, in this Knaben Wunderhorn. Mahler changed it. The, the original title was Verspätung, late, or delay. And what you get in this amazing poem and song is a child who's dying of starvation. And throughout the three verses, he becomes more and more energized and panicked. Mothers keep saying to him, just have a look at it, um, uh, darling, hang on, um, wait, we're going to Morgan, we will ernten, we will harvest the wheat. And the next verse, wait, wait, dear child, we will thresh it tomorrow. And the last stanza, it is when the corn was threshed, it was too late. And when it was baked, rather, it, it's too late, and the child is dead at, at the end. Um, the way Mahler um, treats the child's utterance as geep mir is, um, in, in the first two verses, it's just set to um, an octave leap. But in the third, it's a tenth. It's far more energized and panicked. And also his panic is conveyed through the dynamic which goes from piano to fortissimo. Whereas the woman, the mother, she remains in piano the whole time, as if she knows she can't do anything about it. Can we just look at it? So, um, on we go. So, next one. So, Mutter, so this is a child. Mutter ach Mutter. Mum, mother, mother, es hungert mich. Same language. I'm hungry. Give me a brogue set to an octave. Give me bread, sonst sterbe ich. Otherwise, I'll die. Next one. Warte nur. Just wait, the mother says. My liebes Kind, my dear child. Morgen wollen wir ernten geschwind. We will quickly do the harvest. We will harvest the corn. That's the first verse. Und als das Korn geerntet war, and when the corn had been brought in, had been harvested, rief das Kind noch immer da. The child kept on screaming. And we go, Mutter, ach Mutter, es hungert mich. Gib mir Brot, sonst sterbe ich. Lots of repetition. Give me bread, otherwise I'll die. Next verse. Warte nur, mein liebes Kind. Morgen wollen wir dreschen. English word thresh. Same. We're going to thresh the corn tomorrow. Um, und als das Korn gedroschen war, and when the corn was threshed, rief das Kind, the child screamed, on and on, Mutter, ach Mutter, es hungert mich, gib mir Brot, sonst sterbe ich, otherwise I'll die. Then, warte nur, always in piano for the mother. Wait, dear child, morgen wollen wir backen geschwind, we will bake it tomorrow, just hang on, you'll be all right. And then the rhythm changes and the tempo changes. And als das Korn, gebacken, als das Brot gebacken war, lag das Kind auf der Totenbar. Totenbar on the beer on his coffin. An amazing song. Uh, Florence, how much time have we got? Have, have we got? I, I got 10 minutes. Okay, we now come to Schumann. Um, Schumann's Gedichte der Maria Stuart. These purport to be poems by Mary Stuart. I don't think they are, um, as I'll explain in a minute. Uh, they were composed in December um, 1852 at a time of deep, deep depression. As you probably know, um, Schumann also died of syphilis, like Volt. Um, Schubert didn't die of syphilis, but he had syphilis, and that was, uh, that was a contributory cause. Um, he was also given to mood swings right early on. Um, 
here he's deeply depressed. Um, he found it increasingly difficult to talk even. He spent days on end staring into space. Um, he went for a cure, and that made matters worse. He and, uh, he and Clara then went to Schevingen um, to seek relief through sea bathing. And a fortnight's stay did bring some improvement. In mid-October, he had a serious attack of giddiness. This is uh, still in 1852, four years before he died. And on the 21st of November, he noted in his diary, Merkwürdige Gehörassoziationen. In other words, strange oral symptoms. A month later, these amazing songs were finished, and he gave them Clara as a Christmas present. They're Schumann's last leader. And the five poems that are attributed to Mary, Queen of Scots, were translated by this man called Gisbert um, Freiherr von Winke, and they deal with different times of her life. Abschied von Frankreich, Farewell from France, is set to flowing semiquavers, and it describes her departure from France, where she spent a very happy childhood. Nach der Geburt ihres Sohnes, after the birth of her child, is a fervent prayer to Christ, begging him to protect her infant son. And the Königin Elisabeth, which is marked passionately to Queen Elizabeth, is dominated by this dotted phrase which mirrors the restlessness of Mary as she expresses her fear of what life has in store. Abschied von der Welt, farewell to the world, she reflects on the grief that is destroying her in prison, where she spent 19 years of her life. And the final song, which I'm going to look at, Gebet, is a prayer to God, imploring him to hear her lamentation and save her. You probably know all this, but on the collapse of the Babington plot, Mary was accused of treason. It was months before... Elizabeth signed the death warrant, and when she did, Mary Stuart was given 12 hours to prepare for the end. And it's said that she wrote a prayer in Latin in the early days of 8th of February, 1587, before she was executed at Fotheringay Castle near Peterborough. The poem in Latin is called O Domine Deus, Lord God, Speravi in Te. I hoped in thee. And it was translated by this man, um, Gisbert Freiherr von Winke, and appeared in a, a book which I just acquired. It's a great bibliographical rarity. And it's got all the five poems. But they're translated from Italian, some of them, um, two of them, from French, one from Scottish, and one from Latin. And I, I just think that she didn't write these poems. Um, as Antonia Fraser writes in her book on Mary, Queen of Scots, it's a wonderful book, I quote, in his extremely detailed account of the Queen's last hours, Bourgoin, the great historian, does not mention that she paused to compose or extemporize the Latin prayer traditionally attributed to her on the eve of her execution. These songs are unlike any Schumann song that went before. Um, and he's clearly influenced by the music of Richard Wagner. This is such good program planning, because Joseph and Dorothea, after this, are going to sing the Wagner songs. Wagner once said of his own operas, and remember that Tannhäuser was premiered in 1845 and Lohengrin in 1850, and so these songs are 1852, so I think Schumann would have known these operas. Wagner once said of his own operas that declamation was song, and song was declamation. And Fischer Dieskal, in his book on Schumann, compares Schumann's declamatory style with that of Wagner. And he writes of this last poem that we're going to have a look at, Gebet, I quote, It is fascinating that at this moment in history, two composers 
holding diametrically opposed positions, came close to each other through their declamatory styles. From their respective positions, they were able to define a new kind of diction in German song. Jonathan, if we can just have a look at Gebet, this prayer. Quickly go over the words. O Gott, mein Gebieter, O God, my Lord, ich hoffe auf dich. It's easy, often to hope. I put my hope in thee. O Jesu Geliebter, O Jesus, my beloved, nun rette du mich, save me. Im harten Gefängnis, in the hard prison, in schlimmer Bedrängnis, in awful um, anxiety, ersehne ich dich, I long for thee. In klagen dir klagen, lamenting to you in my lamentations. Im Staube verzagen, despairing in the dust. Erhör ich beschwüre. Look at that wonderful assonance. Erhör ich beschwüre. Here I beseech you and rette du mich. And that rette du mich, although it refers to um, Mary and Stuart, of course it also refers to Schumann. Save me from madness. He tried to jump in the Rhine a year later to commit suicide. He was yanked out by two fishermen and then was transported to Endenich outside Bonn, where he was not allowed to see his wife or children. So when you hear this, this even, Rette du mich, save me, of course it's the Queen, but it's also, um, it's also Robert Schumann. So Fischer Dieskau um, has compared Schumann songs with Wagner. The Wagner songs are the five Wesendonk lieder. Matilda Wesendonk uh, was 30 years old, I think, when um, Schumann, when Wagner got to know her. And with her, he had an affair. She was actually the daughter of one of his benefactors. It must have been incredibly intense, them all living together. I think last year at the Leeds Festival, um, uh, Ian Burnside uh, put on a little playlet about this. Um, and we haven't got time to discuss them because um, there are going to be questions, if you like, and I want to recite it. Um, I've got five minutes. Thank you. Um, she, um, he simply said of these, um, I have never done anything better than these songs, Wagner said, and few of my works will bear comparison with them. They inhabit the same harmonic world as Tristan und Isolde, and two of them he actually wrote that they are studies for Tristan und Isolde. But before we do that, can we just recite, before um, I close for questions, can we just recite Gebet? Do I have time? One minute. One minute. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, imagine then, 19 years in prison, the end has come, you're going to be guillotined, and think of Robert Schumann in his incipient madness, save me. Here we go. And an extraordinary thing about this song, that every entry for the voice is at a higher pitch. It's such a genius device, just screwing up the tension. So see if we can do that. So, not too much to start with. O Gott, mein Gebieter. Eins, zwei, drei. O Gott, mein Gebieter, ich hoffe auf dich. O Jesu, Geliebter, nun rette du mich. Im harten Gefängnis, in schlimmer Bedrängnis, ersehne ich dich. In Klagen dir klagend, in Staube verzagend, Erhöre ich beschwöre und rette du mich. If anyone's interested to browse in these books, I don't particularly want to take them all back to London. <laughs> <laughs> but do just come and have a look if you're interested. Thank you very much and enjoy this evening. And if you have any questions, I think we have to move.